All right. Well, my name is Brad Baldwin. I'm with Keller Williams. I've been with Keller Williams for about a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just joined the company about a month ago. Happy to be here. If you don't know me, my name is Brad Baldwin. Um, I wrote down a few things, kind of get your brains turning a little bit. Um, one of these things is something my grandpa told me a long time ago. He said, don't worry about failure. Worry about the chances you didn't take when you didn't even try. Um, I wrote down, don't be afraid. You fell before you walked. You almost drowned before you learned how to swim. Did you hit a ball the first time you swung a bat? Heavy hitters are the ones that strike out the most. Babe Ruth struck out 1,330 times and hit 714 home runs. R.H. Macy failed seven times before a store in New York City caught on. English novelist John Piercy had 753 rejection slips before he published 587 books. The next three are good ones here. Walt Disney was turned down 302 times before obtaining financing to build the happiest place on earth. Colonel Sanders spent two years on the road and 1,009 presentations to get someone to buy his chicken recipe. Howard Schultz, the guy that made Starbucks, went on 237 presentations before he raised enough money to buy his first store. So I asked myself, when will you quit? How many listing presentations will you go on? How many phone calls are you going to make today? How many door knocks are you going to do? You know, what's your number? And then uh, I was talking to Brian, and he said he wanted me to, I sent this to him. This is something I learned in a class in uh, Las Vegas over the summer. And it got my brain thinking. You might, I'll, and I'll give you these questions later on if you want to, but it's called reality check. And I asked myself these questions. I wrote a big paragraph, you can see, and it's posted on my office. And I look at it every day. I go over them. And it says, how concerned about my lifestyle, about the lifestyle I provide for myself and my family? Am I willing to get out of my comfort zone to improve my family and my lifestyle? What risk am I going to take? Am I willing to make some big sacrifices in the work that I do for a better life in the next three to five years? Do I want the same production and income in three years that I have today? What change in my lifestyle would I make first if I had an extra one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars in income? And am I willing to do what it takes before now and Christmas to make something big happen? And the last one is, do I have the mindset and the motivations and skills to make this happen? So I am big on those kind of questions and things like that. It gets your mind turning and it kind of bright, brings me up to what I wanted to talk about today, which is scripts, you know. And there's three things when I think about scripts. And the first one is money. Money, money, money. Now, People say to me all the time, don't you talk about money a lot? And I said, well, yeah, of course I do. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I came to work today, I didn't come to work for fun. You know, I didn't come to work for, you know, so I can go in my office door and shut it and make 50 phone calls. I mean, I come to work to make money. I mean, plain and simple. And I think we all do. I mean, What's the, what's the point of even being here in this class, sitting here eating sandwiches, listening to me talk? I mean, you want to do something to make more money or to, make, to reach the goals you want. And part of the scripts and prospecting and all that, how that all ties together, is you got to have a clear vision of what you want in life. Why do you want to make all this money? Yeah, I want to make all this money. Why do you want to make this money? Is it a vacation you want to want to take? Do you want to retire early? I mean, what's your why? And you got to get very clear on that goal of 
why you want to make money. I mean, my goal is so crystal clear. I know exactly the day, the time, what I'm wearing, where I'm at, everything, you know, what I want to do to accomplish in life. And the next thing I wrote down is this. Fun. Okay. And what makes this job fun? Uh, you know, which I have to ask myself every day. You're having fun. If you're having fun and you're making money, life's pretty good. That's the best of the best. You laugh a lot. You smile more. You joke more. You lighten the mood up more. And what makes this job fun? For, for me, it's knowing what to say, when to say it, and how to respond. You know, when I go to a listing presentation, I know I walk up with a big smile on my face because I know exactly what I'm going to say to that person. I know what the objections are going to be. I know how to handle it. I know whether I'm going to take that listing or not take the listing. And they're going to list it at my price for how much money I want. And I'm only going to be there for about 30 minutes. And if you have the skills and the scripts and things like that, the money and the fun will happen. So I wrote down the next thing. That's skills. That's how I was thinking I'm writing. But what are the advantages of skills? Well, um, do you want more clients? Say yes. yes. Okay, do you want more listings? Yes. Do you want to take more time off? Yes. Do you want to have more funny while having more fun? Yes. Sharpen your skills. No. The Chiefs played an awesome game Sunday, right? Okay, you think the Chiefs got up uh, Sunday morning, you know, got their uniform on and got out there and just said, let's hike and let's do this? No, I bet you they practiced the same drill over and over and over and over and over. And then they practiced it some more. Then they practiced it more that day and they practiced and they practiced and they practiced. And they rehearsed the skills, the scripts to make the touchdown, to make the play happen, to know what to do when you're down by seven and you need to get eight to win the game, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? So professional salespeople, top producers, okay, you ask any of them. And if you go to these conferences and stuff like I do, I always sit, when I go to a conference, you know, there's a big room. I don't know how many people have ever been, but there's the people in the front and there's the people in the back, okay? I always hang around the front people. Why do I hang around the front people? Because that's usually where your top producers are. That's usually where the best of the best of the best because they want to listen and learn skills, just like I do. I want to learn everything I can about selling real estate daily. And professional salespeople, top producers, know what to say, when to say it, and how to respond. That's the advantages of having great skills. Another advantage is they get deals done quicker. I guess there's people out in this industry now that tell people to do a two-hour listing presentation. I mean, what the heck are you going to talk about for two hours? After an hour, I want to go to sleep. You know, um, people, when you know what to say and you know how to say it, you get deals done quicker. You know, I go into a house, like I said, my listing presentation is about 20 minutes long. I even tell people that I'm going to be 5 to 25 minutes. Is that okay with you? And they look, well, what? I've never had a realtor do that. Sometimes, I, sometimes they're 5 minutes long. I ask them three questions. Boom. And we're done. We're signing the contract. I get deals done quicker. I get negotiations done quicker. I get people to buy quicker. You know, when I have a buyer, I show a buyer five houses, four or five, maybe, maybe at the most. You know, I'm never in the car driving them all over town because I ask questions. I know what to say, when to say it, how to respond. You know, and I'm not saying I'm great. I work on it daily. Daily, 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 I practice my scripts. I read my scripts. I have role play partners all over the country. I got the guy I talked to today was in Florida. The guy I'm talking to tomorrow is in Utah. I got a guy on Thursday I talked to in Canada. Every day I practice scripts for a good 30 minutes to an hour. And last night I'm sitting there at home after dinner. I'm sitting there working on my listening presentation script, reading those questions rehearsing it, rehearsing it, rehearsing it. When I'm going in the car, I've got my Mike Ferry tapes playing in my CDs, going over scripts, in my head, in my head, all the time. I'm all the time practicing my scripts, and it's helped. It's ever since I started doing that, it's helped, you know. It helps me connect the dots, okay. 
helps me connect the dots, helps me know how many people I have to talk to and where to get to my end result and how to get there as quick as I can because nobody wants to sit and prospect for the rest of their life. You know, you want to do it quicker. I talk to 46 people. Some people have talked to 100. You want to talk to 46? Sharpen your skills. Know what to say, when to say it, and how to answer it. People talk too much in this business. And another thing that bothers me a lot is real estate agents are professional salespeople. We're salespeople. We are in sales. You know, we get paid big bucks. I mean, how would you like it if you go to your doctor and he's never practiced a heart surgery before, he knows nothing about it, and you lay on the operating table and here he goes. Or that professional pilot that's going to take you to uh, Austin to mega camp. What if he's never flown a plane before? He never practiced, never got a license. You know, you trust those people. I think we owe it to the public to give them the same respect. Um, that's what's wrong with this industry, in my opinion, is there's way too many of us. So if you want to separate yourself from the pack, know what to say, learn your scripts, be professional, you know, don't show up to a listing presentation in flip-flops and shorts, you know, know what to say, clean your car, um, you know, it all comes down to that. If you want to make the money, you want to make. So, um, you know, and another thing is your your families. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I mean, I've got, I mean, my ex-wife, for instance, you know, when are you going to get a real job? You know, that's what I would get. When are you going to get a real job? And I'm sitting there not knowing what to do, broke, no money. My house is in short sale. My car got repoed. And uh, I was working for my dad as a superintendent. And limited is how much money I can make. I said, well, I tell you what, I can go sell real estate. I'm, I'm pretty good. You know, I can, I can do this, you know. I went out and made a sale, got $8,000. I said, whoa. I found my calling. This is cool. I can make as much money as I want to make. We make more money than doctors, lawyers, anybody. We have the ability to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. You know, it's just silly that we don't take advantage of it. So back to scripts. Um, I talked about practice. I talked about role play. You need to schedule in your daily calendar time to practice your scripts and you need to record it like they're recording this video. My listing presentation I record it all the time and when you role play with people you, you want to role play with somebody that's tough you know you don't want to role play with somebody just you're going through the motions you know you want if someone called me on an expired listing I was role playing with them I'd be like you're the fifth person person that's called today you know stop calling me take me off your list that's how I would role play with them then they, that's how you get better, you know, and get people, um, I've got a role play buddy, he's very hard to understand, he's a um, Hispanic, and he's very hard with English, it's very hard to understand on the phone, but I call people like that, I call for sale by owners like that, I call expired listings like that, practice who you're going to be practicing with. If you get a role play partner that's too soft, you're not doing you or them any justice, okay? And you ought to role play with somebody outside the office. There's tons and tons of people. I mean, I know, I'm sure, you know, I'm new to this company, but I'm sure this is like my prior company. There's agents all over this country that you've met or know or can meet. I would go find top producers in Central Time Zone or in Florida Time Zone or California Time Zone. And I would call, just call them and set up, number one, you're to contact. Maybe they got a referral coming into Kansas City. Number two, set up a role play partner. Find somebody with like goals that you want to, that you want to succeed like you and practice with them. It's very, it's very, you sound silly at first, you know, but you have to do it. It's just something you have to do. It's required, it's required to get better, you know. Another way to really learn your scripts is to write them out. You know, write your script out, every script whether it's center of influence script, for sale by owner script, your listing presentation. My listing presentation's completely written out. And I take it just like I am right here. When I go to a listing presentation, I'm reading it like this. My scripts are so verbatim, I read them and I write down the answer. I read them, I write down the answer. I read them, I write down the answer. I mean, I just don't even wing it. You gotta use a script and you gotta use it verbatim every single time, no exceptions. That's the only way to do it. That's the way I do it. That's the way other top producers do it. And 
you should be doing that if you want to make money. If you don't want to make money, just just fly. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. When you role play with these different people around the country, uh -huh. it could even be you know, wherever. Do you focus like today? Do you role play for sale by owners tomorrow? Expires or do you? Yeah. I mean, hey, do you have it set up prior? Or yeah. No. You know, I call up uh, and there's no no chit chat. Right. No weather. I called up uh, Hermes today, and I said, Hermes, you ready for role play? Yes, I am. I said, I'll be working on for sale by owner script today. What do you want to work on? He goes, I'm going to be working on pre-qualifying script today. Okay, you go first. Awesome. Get rolling. Okay. You know? Did I understand you to say that you actually write out your listing presentation? Yes, my listing presentation is questions, complete questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's questions, and I write it out, and I put it on my company letterhead with my name on it. And you look professional. You look like you're taking, a, like a doctor. You're taking a note. You know, where are you going to be moving to? Okay, moving to St. Louis. And how soon do you want to be there? Now, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you told me you owe about $100,000 on your home. Is that correct? Yes, it is. You need to write it down. And every question is written down on a piece of paper. And I take it every single time I go. With no exceptions. And if I get off script, I know I'm off script if I'm there longer than 30 minutes something happened they either got me off and that makes me up very upset because when you practice really 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 hard you um and if something messes up i mean it happens it happens to everybody but it, it makes you upset but yeah i would write down all the questions and when i when i prospect i have all the scripts written out laid out on my board you know when you prospect you should stand up you should have a headset you look kind of like you're a telemarketer, but you are a telemarketer. But you got I got a headset on. I'm standing up. I got some music going on, some hip hop or something to get me in the mood. You know, I maybe do some affirmations and, and I read my scripts. I mean, it's just right there. I'm just dialing phones and waiting for somebody to answer, you know. And if you know the scripts, you know what to say. Dialing that phone is very easy. You know, it, it takes the fear out of it. And part of taking that fear out is it's all tied back into money. You know, what do you want money for? You know, I mean, like I woke up this morning at one o'clock in the morning, I sit there and I look at my girlfriend and her kid upstairs, I'm going, ugh, these people are depending on me. You know, she's depending on me. I got all these people depending on me. You know, I have to, I don't have a choice. I have to dial the phone. I have to, because that's the only way we're gonna make any money. You know, to get to where we want to go, I probably wouldn't have to dial that phone and probably make an okay living. But it's not where I want to go. It's not where my girlfriend, my kids want me to go. You know, so it all ties in, all ties in together. You know, like I said, you know, when you, I don't know, my story. I've been broke twice in my entire life, and both times are not fun. It's very hard when your wife looks over and says, "I'm getting divorced over no reason but money." because we're fighting all the time and they're repoing your cars and you're sleeping in cars and you don't have any place to live and it's it's a mess it's not it's not fun unfortunately I've had those experiences which makes me get very very motivated to have money and I want money to achieve the goals I want I want to make my goals are very 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 clear I know exactly how many transactions how many people I have to call who I have to call, you know. I know the I know the ones that yield more fruit. I know that the expires and the fizbos yield more fruit than my COI, you know. It's just they're really wanting to sell. My COI might sell, you know. So if I get low on listings, I know that hey, I need to call those guys more. I need to call more of them because they want to list today. COI might list tomorrow. So and uh, go ahead. Process guy, and I get stuck on process stuff. So, where do you find these scripts? These, these scripts? Yeah, where do you find them? How do you get them? How do you I, I, when I was sitting there, when I was sold my first house, um, I was just playing around on the internet, and I found a guy named Mike Ferry, and uh, I do nothing but listen to him, except for Brian. He's the first person that's ever draw me away from Mike Ferry. He's not drawing me away, but I will listen to Brian um, because, the, you know, he's got some things that I'm interested in, very interested in, that I know will help. But Brian will tie in my Mike Ferry together, which I'm cool. But that's who I picked, and that's the only person I follow. I won't 
hardly, I won't listen to a Kinder Reese, and I won't listen to a Brian Buffini, and I don't even, I don't care anything about them, you know. I listen to Mike Ferry, I use all his scripts. They're all, they all come here in this little book. $12,000, you get a little book. <laughs> and it's got, every, it's got all the scripts and any objection you could possibly have. And a lot of people's like, oh, Mike Ferry's old guy, you know. Well, I guarantee you 40 years ago, the for sale by owner wanted to save commission just like he does today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same objection. Expired listing, uh, they, why is the listing expired? It was the agent's fault. I'm sure that's what they said 40 years ago. I mean, the scripts aren't going to ever, ever change, whether you're on the internet or not. If you're at the door, it's the same questions. It's just asking questions. When you get to telling and, and, and telling, like, I'm sure, like, have some fun with me for a second. Okay. okay. I say, uh, no, you know, I don't want to pay your 6% commission. Yep, that's a lot of money. You're done. Stop. You've already messed it up. You're sitting there telling them. Just say, just, just say, okay, but you just say no. Do you have any other questions? It's just, just I know what to say. I say that every single time. I always get my 6%. Always, always, always. I only want a 60-day listing. My company doesn't allow that, ma'am. They require six months. But do you have any other questions? Nope. <laughs> they do it every time. When you know what to say and how to respond, you don't take overpriced listings. You don't take short terms. You don't take discounted commissions. And when you learn how to say the right things, they want to pay you. Wouldn't that be great that they want, God, this guy, I, I want to pay him, you know? That's how a lot of, I mean, I haven't gotten that commission thing for a long time. I mean, they want to pay me. I've been on expired listings where they had it listed for 4% and I listed for 6%, you know? Um, but if you get good at what you're saying, know how to say, if, they, if it does bother them and they, they won't take it, then you just fold up your stuff and leave. Because you know I can go down the street and I can call, start calling people and get another one. It's just as simple as that. I can pick who I want to work with, what price range, what area of town, just anything, you know. Whatever I want to do, I can because you prospect. I know my scripts. Brian, uh, Brad, uh, just to expound on your question, Mark, on Keller Williams University, there's a, if you go in there, there's scripts there too. They're not my fair. Yeah, there's scripts there. There's scripts there as well. And then, although I obviously don't have an exercise it yet, there's a really good class that Keller Williams puts on. It's called the language of sales. And it, I've gone through it twice, but I just never focused on it. So I'm going to do it again. But it is the very best class I have ever been in. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, yeah, I got on. Isn't it great? Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Teach you how to use You got to, you got to know the stuff. And then if you, and if you role play enough and you get comfortable with it, it's, it's like vomit. It just right. comes out of your mouth. <laughs> Ugh, you know, I just, I just, I don't even have to think about it anymore. Like, I mean, I'm just, I don't know if you call it nuts, you know, uh, they go, man, you, you take it pretty hardcore with your scripts. I'm just doing my job. Mm -hmm. About how many questions are you asking at your listing? Presentation? How many are they? Yeah, let's see, there's one. I end at 16. And that's what the first three for the one minute presentation. The one minute presentation is pretty good. You know? Hi, thanks for having me over. I'm excited about getting your home on the market and getting it sold. Do you mind if I take a quick look around the home? And you ask them three questions. Do you absolutely have to sell this home? I say yes. Will you price the home to sell or do you want to keep it on the market for a long period of time? We'll price it to sell. Do you want me to handle the sale for you? They say yes. Well, all we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can get you what you want and the time you want. Wouldn't that be great? You slide it over. <laughs> and it happens all the time. Okay, but they don't want, they're not in a hurry to sell. Okay, well, okay just stop. If they weren't in a hurry to sell, before I go on a listing presentation, I write, I qualify all my people, pre-qualify 100%. Well, on question here, number three, tell me again where you're moving to. They tell me where they're moving. And how soon do you have to be there? If they give me a question, an answer like, well, whenever it sells, it sells, that tells me that they're not motivated. There's, or there's another lining story. Do you 
go, still go on I, that presentation? I, I try to get the answer. I try to get the answer out of them. But if they just saying, we just want to test the waters, you know, we heard the market's getting better, we kind of want to sell our house. There's got to be a reason why, and I want to find that reason. I'll just keep asking questions so I get that reason. If I can't get the reason, then <laughs> thank you for your time. But I'm not going to waste my time and go over there and do a presentation and do a pre-listing packet and do all that stuff and role play for 40 minutes before I go. I'm not going to waste the time. They have to tell me that's, they have to tell me that kind of stuff. When I see you, how much do you want to list your home for? You know, how much do you own the property? Have you ever thought about selling it yourself? Will you help finance the buyer? Or do you want the cash out? Will you describe the home for me? Do you have any other questions before I arrive? That's when they bring up, well, how much is your commission? Well, commission is important to you. I totally understand that. It would be the first thing we talk about when I go through the door. Do you have any other questions? Now I know I'm up against a commission battle. And question two, are you planning on interviewing more than one agent for the job of selling your home? Don't tell me if I know I'm against agents. I know what I'm up against so I can prepare. So when I go on it, I know, I know what to do and what to say. That's how, that's how you handle that. I wouldn't, if you prospect like you're supposed to prospect, you don't have to go on bad listing appointments and waste your time. And if you're new, I would do it to practice. I would do it to practice, just like uh, the Starbucks guy. You know, I bet he got pretty darn good at it after 230 something times of, you know, presenting, you know, it, it takes practice, it takes a long time. And the more you master your skills, the more you get better at it, the better you become. You know, you only have to go on two appointments to get a listing now. Now I have to go on one and a half listings appointments to get a listing. You know, it just, you get better, you get better, you get better. You make more time, have more fun. If, um, if, so, if you do talk to someone and they are, yeah, we definitely want to talk to you, Brad, we want you to come over and list the home, but we are upside down in this house and we're going to have to list it for more than it's worth, um, but we feel like you're the guy to do this, are you going to take that listing appointment or are you going to say... Well, it depends on their motivation to move. Do they have the money to bring to the table? Um, if they don't have the money to bring to the table, we need to talk about short sale. What's your motivation? Why do you want to sell? Uh, if you're upside down in your home, and why sell it? What's the point? Obviously, you don't have, you're not motivated enough. You're not getting a job transfer. You're not getting divorced. You're, you're not, uh, you didn't just have triple, triplets. Uh, you know, you, you got to have some stuff going on. And if you have some stuff going on, then do you have the money? They always got the money. <laughs> but if, if they don't have the money, then we need to talk about short sale. And we go right into short sale presentation. It's, and it's nothing to be embarrassed about. I mean, I got a little easier time than other people because I'm like, dude, I've been sitting right where you're sitting, having the same conversations with my wife. So don't feel bashful. <laughs> I know how it is, you know. And uh, that's kind of a, your answer to your question. It all has to do with motivation. People just don't. It just takes you to another script. Just takes me to another script, another series of questions, and you got to keep. Sometimes you got to keep probing, especially the people that are very analytical. You know, they want to know how many homes you've sold. They sold 14.34 homes in the last 14 three days. You know, analytical people. You got to ask them tons and questions, but you'll never hear me just sitting there flapping my gums. I'm just answering questions and shutting up, letting them. They'll answer, they'll, they'll, the problem will take care of themselves because they're going to keep talking about it and then they're thinking, wait a second, that's kind of silly, not just to pay the guy, you know, or we might as well list it for six months, you know, could take that long to sell, you just keep asking questions, shut up, and, and let them take care of their own problem. Brad, I feel like uh, when I go to listing presentations, the seller is either asking me questions like, what do you think I need to do to fix up the house? Or they are, um, you know, just asking, like, questions that keep you there longer. How mm -hmm. do you kind of keep that from happening? Well, I start off by taking control of the conversation. How you take control of conversations is you don't let them ask questions. You ask the questions. They're giving you answers. When I go into a house, I don't let it, ever let them take me through the house, ever, 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 because they're going to talk to me and tell me how great their house is and all this stuff. And you come up, well, I've got granite countertops in. Oh, okay. Well, what if the person buying your house wants Corian? How much is granite countertops going to mean to them? 
nothing. Absolutely zero, nothing. I mean, not everybody wants granite. I like Corian. I wouldn't put granite in my house. You know, I like black appliances. I want stainless. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know. But when I when take a quick look through the home, you know, I say, now, I, I usually have something there. I deliver a packet of information. And I say, why don't you guys review the packet to get familiar with what you reviewed earlier. I want to take a quick look through the house like I was a buyer. I'll meet you right back here at the kitchen table. I just, all I'm looking for is leaks, you know, broken stuff, you know, stuff that needs help. Anyway, that's... Uh, yeah, very motivated meal tip. Very motivated. <laughs> I, she's like, dude, you better be dialing. You're at lunch with your friends, aren't you? You're having coffee. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah, that's how I get through that. But I, I'm not, I, and I tell people, I'm not a decorator. I'm horrible at it. I hired interior decorators to do my house. You know, I'm here to sell your house. This is what it's going to sell for. This is how much money you're going to get. And this is how I'm going to get it done. you have any other questions? Because <laughs> I'm not there to decorate your house. I'm not there to tell you what to do. And if it's in that bad of shape, then we just need to adjust the price. And if you're not willing to adjust the price, then you need to put features in the house, one of the two. And that's an objection that's in the script. You know, are you willing to do that? Well, no, we don't want to spend any more money on it. Well, it just leaves us one more thing, the price. Well, yeah, I guess. If we're not going to put any more money on we just got to adjust the price. Yeah, to sell your house, you have to adjust the price. I suggest we drop it to five thousand dollars. What do you think? Yeah, sounds good to me, Brad. <laughs> you know, so that's how you over. That's how you get through it.